Well, hello there, and welcome to day number 16 in our series called Why Pray? A 40-day prayer journey. Um, today's theme is shining the spotlight of God's love in the darkness. Now, if you've read today's reading in the Why Pray book, it talked about a shopping area that had been particularly hard hit by crime. When I was reading the story, I thought long and hard about the places in our neighborhood where things might be tough. Are there places in town where I wouldn't want to walk around in the evening? Are there places where I don't feel safe? I was talking about this area that, that we live with a, a, a pastor friend of mine who said that Calamasa Yucaipa area is like almost no other area in Southern California. You drive through San Bernardino headed east from LA out on the 10, and you get to the top of the Yucaipa grade and you may as well be in another state, another place. Yeah, we've got all the problems as the big cities, but not to the same extent. And as you drive out further, onto the 10 into the desert, you find places with unique challenges. But it's like a different world out there. Here's the question as we pray today. Where are the areas in our region that, that need prayer? Even in our unique area. Yeah, we have some homeless just like other towns. Yeah, we have pockets where you know you wouldn't want to, to be after dark or, or perhaps there's places where, where there's a, a, a higher amount of people who might be struggling with mental illness. You know there are places in our community where crime is more of a problem. But do we pray for those places? I mean, do we really pray for them? Sometimes the prayer is simply that, that we would be safe as we pass through. But what would it look like if we intentionally prayed for the people of those areas, whether you live in Beaumont or, or Redlands or even Cherry Valley? How could God work if we asked Him to intervene in the tough areas of our community? What if we asked him to, to do a miracle in one of the houses where we know the enemy is working overtime? I get a sense that our prayer would be much, much more powerful and, and more effective than we even think. So here's the question, how will you pray today? Over the, the first couple of weeks, we, we um, took the time to share with you the um, the the communion, the, the, the reflection for the day, not the communion thought, but the reflection for the day and, and how specifically that, that you would pray. Um, for the, this day and yesterday, we, we're kind of leaving that out to, to kind of give you a challenge to do that on your own. If you don't have a book yet, um, I know that most of you have said, I've already done that by the time you get to the video. So um, take that time to, to do the reflection and do the prayer. But if you don't have the book and you're just following along with the, the videos, um, we'll make sure in the coming days to, to renew that, that um, practice of, of sharing those reflections with you and, and, and um, guiding you through those. But just for a moment, let's pray today. God, thank you for this opportunity to pray for the communities that we live in. God, we pray that you would, um, that you would start to lay it on our heart, the, the specific places in our neighborhoods where, where you would want us to, to, to stand in the gap for those people. Thanks for this opportunity to pray, God. Um, we just pray that you would help us to, to constantly talk to you as the day goes on. We pray it in your son Jesus' name. Amen.